Field work is a very important part of geology, but we can't do everything in the field. So we've come back here to the lab to look at the sand in more detail. We're going to use two very simple techniques. One, using sieves, where we can get an idea of the grain size distribution of the sand. And secondly, a microscope, where we can see more clearly exactly what the sand's made of. Let's start with a microscope. Here's some sand I brought back from the beach. Right, this is a lovely sand. Lots of large quartz crystals, which are fairly angular and got nice reflecting surfaces on them. There's also some white creamy feldspars. Ah, and there's some lovely little dark mica flakes and also some clear mica flakes. But I'm particularly interested in the shapes and surface textures of these quartz grains, because they can tell me a lot about what's happened to the quartz grains in this sand. If I look at the shapes first of all, I can see that they're very angular. In fact, they're remarkably similar to the angular quartz grains we saw in the granite up on the moor. And that suggests that these quartz grains haven't gone very far. If I look now at the surface textures, they're glassy and reflecting. And that tells me that these quartz grains have been transported by water because water has cushioned the impacts between the grains. Already, we've got two vital pieces of evidence from these quartz grains. First of all, shape. They are angular, and that tells us that they have not been processed for very long, otherwise they would be more rounded. Secondly, we have surface texture. These quartz grains have glassy, reflective surfaces, and that tells us that the main transporting medium was water. I have another sand here, let's have a more careful look at that one. I'll get rid of this one first. This is quite, quite different. But what about this reddish surface colour we've got here? Let's take a more careful look at that. It certainly appears to be just a surface coating with the red stuff around it. So this appears just to be an iron oxide coating on some of these grains. But again, I'm very interested in the surface texture and the shape. Let's have a look at the shape first. Oh, it's really striking. These grains are beautifully rounded. There's hardly an angular surface to be seen anywhere. I have to think of some way in which I'm going to get very rounded grains with all the angular corners knocked off. But let's have a look at texture now. Look at this one here. You can see its surface is covered with tiny little pits and scratches. That's what's giving this grain its surface frosted appearance. Putting these two pieces of evidence together, we've got well-rounded grains and we've got frosted surfaces. We need to think of an environment where grains are colliding violently with each other, causing all the pits and scratches which give rise to the frosting, and also they get the corners knocked off them to give you the rounded shape. Can you think of a modern day environment where you might find this sort of sand? I hope you thought of a desert. There's no water there cushioning impacts between the grains. They can collide violently as the wind blows them around on the desert. So, microscopes provide us with three key pieces of evidence. First of all, the presence or absence of other rock fragments or mineral grains can tell us much about the original source of the sand. Secondly, the shapes of the quartz grains tell us how much they've been processed. And thirdly, the surface texture of the quartz grains tells us a great deal about the main transporting medium, frosted if it's wind, and glassy and reflecting if it's by water.